Hello and welcome to part four of the shark fish game. Uh, so far we've done the basic game in part one. We've animated the shark in part two. We've added multiple fish in part three and talked a little bit about collision detection. And now we're going to move on to probably the most important concept in all of programming, uh, especially when it comes to gaming, and that's variables. So one of the reasons why I challenged you to get fish, uh, three fish in your game instead of one is because if you imagine it, a game where there's only one fish, if the shark catches the fish, that's a fairly simple process to tell the game that that's happened, the user wins, and then we stop right there. But if the computer has to keep track of whether or not multiple fish have been caught, the only way to really pull that off is to understand variables. So hopefully when you watch this tutorial, it will clarify the importance of variables and uh, you can always ask me for extra help if you don't understand the tutorial, but I'll do my best to make it clear. So a variable is uh, a value that changes over time. That's all it is. You guys have used them in math many times, uh, usually represented by X, for example. Uh, in this case, we're going to assign a variable. Now, you got to be careful what tab you use variables in. Uh, in my experience with Alice, the only tab that variables actually work and do anything is the My First Method tab. If anybody finds otherwise, please let me know. But I haven't been able to use variables in the event listeners or even in the procedure tabs. So you need to make sure that you're in the My First Method tab. And what we're going to do is we're going to create three different variables to keep track of whether or not our fish have been caught. So we're going to drag the variable tab up to the top. And we're going to make the variable a Boolean variable, which is simply a variable that can only have two values. And in this case, it's either going to be true or it's going to be false. Now, we need one of these for each of our fish. So our first one is going to be, I'll go in the order of the procedures down here. So our first one is going to be blue tang caught. Now, the way to think about this in your head is, has the blue tang fish been caught? Like that's what we want the computer to keep track of in our program. Okay. Now, we're going to initialize this value, if you think about it, since it's at the very start of our program, the very first line of our program. Has the blue tang fish been caught at the start of our game? No, that would be false. It hasn't been caught. Okay. So let's start by assigning that. So you can imagine that we're also going to need one for the carp. So we're going to drag another variable, make it a Boolean, and we're going to say carp caught. And again, what would the value be at the start of the game? The carp has not been caught, so we're going to assign it to false. And finally, our last one, another Boolean. And this is going to be clown fish caught. And the clownfish has not been caught at the start of the game. So all three are uh, assigned a value of false at the start. Now what we need the game to do is we need the game to continuously check to see if any of these conditions should change. So we need loops that are running forever. And we need them to check collision, basically. How do we know if they've been caught? We know if the shark's head collides with the fish, then they must have been caught. So that's what we're going to ask the game to check. So we already have a do together block here with our procedures of the fish swimming. And we're going to drag a loop while true is true. All that means, again, is that this is always going to run this loop because uh, there's never a case where true isn't true. That's like 1 equals 1. It's always going to be that value, right? OK, so while true is true, uh, we need an if statement. And we can set the if to true for now. But what we're going to want to do, you can see over here, I've dropped down to the shark. And specifically, if your game's set up that the shark can only catch the fish, if the head collides with the fish, then you're making your game a little bit more challenging, which I'm trying to do here. So if the tail of the shark hits the fish, this isn't going to factor in. It's only the head of the shark. And you can see if we switch from procedures to functions now, we're going to see the option to do colliding with. So if the shark's head is colliding with something else, let's replace the true in the if statement, not the while, but the if statement, and let's select the first fish that we're looking for. So the first fish is the blue tang. 
And you could select a specific part of the blue tang if you wanted to. Um, but for me, the game makes sense that the, the shark's head could collide with any part of the fish and we'd consider them eaten at that point. So I'm not going to select a specific part. So if the shark's head's colliding with any part of the blue tang, what are we going to do? Well, we need to assign our variable for the blue tang caught from false to true. Because if this happens, that means he's been caught and we want the game to keep track of that. So here we go. Sorry about that. A couple emails coming in. Uh, we're going to assign a new value to the blue tang caught, and we're going to uh, make it true in this case. Okay? That must be true now. Um, else, if, uh, set it to true for now. Oops, that should be in here. And uh, again, the shark, if the shark is colliding with, uh, let's do our next fish now, which is the carp. Then what are we going to do? We're going to assign the variable of carp caught to true. And finally, if the shark, oops, if in the else statement, true for now, if the shark is colliding with, our last fish is the clownfish. So we're going to find him. Then we'll assign the clownfish caught. That is now true. All right. So this loop runs for the entire game. It doesn't look like anything to the user. All we have right now is a system set up where the computer is keeping track of whether or not these fish have been caught. OK. OK, so now what we have is we have uh, three different variables all checking to see if the fish have been collided with the shark in some way. And really the last thing you need to make this work is you need uh, a way for the game to know if the user's won. So basically we want to create a condition that checks to see if all of these are true. Because if they all become true, that means the shark has caught all three fish, which means the user has won the game. So we're going to get into that. We need one more variable that we're going to create. And we're just going to call it win. And it's going to be a Boolean. And we're going to set that to false at the start because the user has not won the game at that point. And now we need another loop, another while loop set to true. So it's always going to check this. And all right, so here's maybe the most complex one line of code that you're going to write. Uh, if set it to true as default. OK, now when you drop down on true, you're going to see some of these variables. So, for example, if clownfish caught is true, but not just clownfish caught, if clownfish caught and carp caught are true, and not just those two, if those two and the blue tang, so in other words, if all three of those fish have been caught, then we want to assign the variable of win is now true. OK, so the user has won the game. Nothing's happened to tell the user that they've won the game, but the computer now knows that that win variable is true. So one more thing that we'd have to do, at least to tell the user that they've won, and there's many ways you can do this. I'll get into a more complex way in a future tutorial, but uh, just the absolute basics of saying to the user that you've won the game is going to score you a lot higher points. So well true is true if win is true. OK, so in other words, if all three of these are true, that becomes true. And if that's true, then you could have the shark, for example, uh, just say something basic. The shark could say, uh, you win. Or I win, you could write if you wanted to. Uh, so now you've used variables to keep track of a way to win the game. I think I'm going to stop there uh, in terms of this tutorial. But in the next tutorial, we'll talk about how would you create a situation where they could lose the game. Now, a couple things about testing this to see if it works. Number one, if your game's fairly hard, if the fish are moving quickly and the shark's not moving very quickly, it might be really hard to beat your game. So what I did to just test this to make sure it would work is I went to my scene setup and I just uh, created an overhead camera above the shark 
and I just plunked all three fish in front of the shark to begin with. The easiest way to do that is just to take like the carp, for example, to look at the coordinates, especially the Y coordinate, that's the height. So I looked at the shark and I said, okay, well, what is the height of the shark? It's two. So I put the height of the carp at two. Um, I put the height of the, what else do I have? Clownfish at two. And I kind of stuck them all in front of the shark so that I could test this really easily. I also slowed down their speed just for the tests, just to make sure that your variables are working. So uh, mine are being covered right now, but if I bring back blue tang, you can see that I made him take a long time to be able to uh, move forward. So he's moving at a very slow pace, which will allow me to test the game a lot easier that way. Okay, so there's a basic look at the uh, variable portion of things, and in the next tutorial, we'll get to how could you make the conditions so that you lose the game if maybe so much time passes. We'll take a look at timers and how to do that. Uh, don't forget as well, in your initialize event listeners, we had a collision listener for the clownfish to make them disappear and to make the shark get bigger. You're going to want this exact same thing uh, for the two other fish that we put in the blue tang and the carp. Okay, so thanks for watching and uh, hope you have fun with that.